We all know that vitamin B12 deficiencies very unusual, maybe rare, right? No, that's not right. It's far more common than, uh, than docs tend to realize, or any of us tend to realize. Um, <clears throat> this is the fourth or fifth in a series on uh, vitamin B12 deficiency. One of the series covered this, um, this image. Um, malabsorption is one of the most common causes of uh, vitamin B12 deficiency. Once you go through the details, and you can do that on the other video, you begin to understand why malabsorption is such a big problem. Other major issues have to do with uh, taking medications like proton pump inhibitors or antacids, which decrease absorption, or metformin, which can decrease absorption. Or aging is a big, a big deal in terms of decreasing uh, absorption of vitamin B12. We talked about some other stuff, too. We talked about uh, uh, signs and symptoms. A lot of, um, <clears throat> we mentioned briefly anosmia, the inability to smell or taste as a very subtle sign or symptom. Uh, the most common thing that your docs tend to look at would be peripheral blood um, anemia. But <clears throat> today we're going to talk about neuropsychiatric over here, the brain, mental status, cognitive defects, depression, uh, irritability, even delusions, and mania. Um, you can also get problems with uh, specific uh, nerve uh, issues like um, symmetric weaknesses, uh, hyperreflexia, paresthesias. We'll talk about those again as we uh, go a little bit deeper into it. The um, one of the things to be sure and remember is that you don't have to have anemia, as seen in this uh, headline of this article. You don't even have to have low vitamin B12 levels. Remember, uh, vitamin B12 or serum cobalamin levels are not the best test. Um, probably by far the best test, and we've covered that in a couple of videos as well, is um, methylmalonic acid. And homocysteine. Homocysteine is very good. Methyl malonic acid in the serum or blood is even better. Now let's talk about the neuropsychiatric issues. Uh, depression. Just run-of-the-mill depression. How common is that? Now not every depression is caused by um, vitamin B12 deficiency. Uh, peripheral neuropathy. I mentioned in the beginning of the series my wife has had Two ladies, uh, one 57 years old and one 67 years old, uh, both of whom have started complaining of uh, numbness, tingling, loss of feeling, sharp jabbing pain, and hypersensitivity in their feet. Both feet, meaning if it's one foot, that tends to think more of one, a single nerve problem, but when it's both feet, that makes you think of systemic issues. Uh, if you're thinking maybe there is unrecognized... Um, diabetes. That's certainly uh, very high on the, uh, on the what we call differential, the potential uh, causes. But also, don't forget type 2, I mean uh, B12 deficiency. So we're going to go through uh, an article that's just all about the neuropsychiatric issues associated with um, um, B12 deficiency. Actually, it was a literature review article written for psychiatrists specifically. But we'll cover that in just a minute. Uh, but first, a brief uh, introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F O R D Brewer, B R E W E R, uh, prevmedheartrisk.com. We're working on the, don't worry about going to the, um, um, back to our website just yet. We're doing a whole lot of major reconstruction and we'll be adding a lot of blogs. Um, <clears throat> I started off, gosh, in the early 80s in the, e, in the ER. Most patients coming into the ER bring death, disease, and disability that should have been prevented. I got very emotionally uh, committed to that. Went to Johns Hopkins to learn to uh, learn prevention. Loved it. Um, ended up running the program there and have ended up uh, running large medical staffs, uh, primary care doc, medical staff, over 800 docs, as well as seeing patients. Um, focusing the activities on prevention 
rather than waiting till the disease happened. Now, I mentioned this article a minute ago. It's in Neuropsychiatry magazine. And again, it's an article for uh, psychiatrists. This was a while back. This was January 2012. But they've got some very interesting uh, components in here that I thought uh, I'd share with you. Number one, it's a common cause of neuropsychiatric symptoms in elderly people. Uh, malabsorption causes the, uh, accounts for the majority of cases. Um, neurologic, cognitive, psychotic, and mood symptoms, as well as treatment resistance with the psychiatrist. So it can cause a lot of problems. Neurologic, like the nerve damage that we talked about. Cognitive, it can cause somebody to not be able to think well. They can get psychotic and, in other words, totally lose touch with reality in addition to run-of-the-mill depression or uh, anxiety. And it can help, it, it can be associated with decreased uh, ability to respond to psychiatric treatment. Now, clinician awareness should be raised. They mention this again, just like the psychiatrists are not thinking about B12 deficiency, just like the primary care docs are not thinking about it. Um, in the beginning, it's, uh, it's very uh, responsive to vitamin B12. But uh, as it continues to go further, you can get irreversible structural brain damage. Uh, current practice is ineffective at di uh, identifying cases. So again, a lot of interesting uh, information in here. Unfortunately, I don't think I can get uh, the rest of the image up. They do make a comment that they, it is estimated that up to 40% of older adults have vitamin B12 deficiency. Now, that is from their review of the literature, um, <clears throat> and they did review quite a, few, uh, quite a few articles in that area. I, I had wanted to mention that, and unfortunately, I'd wanted to show it, but I can't get it on the screen. Uh, just not so much to say that I believe it's that high, but to say that, look, there is some uh, case to be made that uh, vitamin B12 deficiency is far more common than we think. So here's a couple of comments uh, about the uh, deficiency itself that um, they covered in this article. They're talking about cobalamin or B12 uh, metabolism and pathophysiology. Patho means uh, damage or disease and physiology means how it works. Ology means study of. So the study of how the disease works. Uh, the cobalt, it's a cobalt containing tetrapyrrole ring. It's a I'm not going to get into the images, uh, the biochemistry here, other than just to quote, quote them. It's uh, nucleotides, which are uh, attached to this ring. It's made by anaerobic bacteria. So again, um, you get it in foods, foods of animal origin, fish, meat, dairy products, and eggs. Um, those of us who ate cereal in the past may get it from fortified cereal. I think most of the viewers of this channel are probably not eating uh, much cereal. The allowance, uh, recommended daily allowance, RDA of B12, is 2.54 micrograms per day. Um, <clears throat> for persons over age 14, the average adult daily intake is about 5 uh, to 30 micrograms, of which only 1 to 5 micrograms is effectively absorbed again, given the complex absorption process. It's estimated that only half of dietary B12 is absorbed by uh, healthy adults. Defects at any step along the way uh, for absorption can cause cobalamin or B12 deficiencies. Uh, 50 to 90 percent of, of the cobalamin or B12 stores, that which equals out to about three to five milligrams, are located in the liver. Now, if you're sitting there trying to say, well, how many, you're only getting one to five mil milligrams. No, no, no. You get one to five micrograms per day, and your total storage is three to five milligrams. So how many milligrams in a microgram? I believe it's a thousand, uh, the other way around. A thousand micrograms, because one microgram is 10 to the negative six, micro is negative six, um, grams, and milligram is 10 to the negative 3, 1 1,000th one versus 1 1 millionth, I think. 
So <clears throat> these have delay for up to five years. Again, you've got a thousand days worth of it stored in your liver. So <clears throat> um, that's what, three to five years. So epidemiology, that means, it's not so much the study of epidemics. Epidemiology means the study of the disease in a large population. So it's estimated that 3 to 40% of older adults have vitamin B12 deficiencies. Let me reread that. They estimate 3 to 40%, and they gave a list of their, um, of their um, articles where they got that. Lower rates are seen in the community, and higher rates are seen in institutional se settings. So remember, this is uh, written for psychiatrists, and so when they're talking about in institutional settings, they're talking about... Um, um, nursing homes uh, for elderly, things like that. Prevalence rates vary according to economic age, or economic status, age, and dietary choices. And again, as I've mentioned multiple times, age is a major driver. Dietary choices, especially vegan, vegetarian, um, plant-based diets, all increase risk. In their multi-ethnic study, they saw elderly white men uh, white men with uh, increased um, deficiencies, uh, increased prevalence of deficiency. Um, the elderly population is at higher risk for multiple re uh, for for reasons that I've mentioned multiple times. It's the elderly are much more susceptible to autoimmune or atrophic gastritis. Also, the use of medications can interfere with B12 absorption. Uh, the most common ones by far are the antacids. And uh, yes, for the older, for those of us with uh, type 2 diabetes or insulin resistance, uh, metformin can decrease um, uptake of vitamin B12. 10 to 30% of older people are unable to adequately absorb B12 from foods. Currently, it's estimated that food cabal absorption um, accounts for about two-thirds of the cases, followed by pernicious anemia. Pernicious anemia is the autoimmune uh, loss of uh, intrinsic factor, and that accounts for 15 to 20 percent. So uh, I think those are, um, I'm not sure that those numbers are entirely accurate. I think there's probably a lot more going on in terms of um, uh, medications and uh, like especially proton pump inhibitors as well as uh, dietary issues. Those two did cover aging. Now, <clears throat> to get into the, uh, a little bit deeper into what we call the pathophysiology, the study of the problem, this is by far mostly, you find this, you see this last thing, uh, cobalamin deficiency has been found to cause myelin damage. It increases myelin atoxic uh, and decreases myelin trophic growth factor. Again, it got into... Let me, let's just go back. It causes damage to myelin. Myelin is very much analogous. You know when you have an electric wire, you have a rubber coating so the um, wire doesn't short out. Myelin for a nerve or an act, a nerve cell is totally analogous to that rubber coating. If you start losing the myelin of your nerves, your nerves will short out. And that is, uh, again, what's going on in terms of uh, B12 deficiency. It's a myelotoxic, or it uh, screws up the, um, the coating of the nerve cells. So they short out. So if it's causing that down in the, in the legs and feet, you get that uh, foot neuropathy. If it's causing it up in the brain, you get anything from depression to dementia to... Um, anxiety, and, a, and uh, a lot of other things. So <clears throat> there are other, other reasons for it as well. Some of you will be interested in these. Disruption in methylation or one carbon transfer reactions in the CNS. So um, yes, that's a, a component. You remember we talked about B12 is a, a component of some of the methylation uh, reactions. Uh, the methylation reactions in the CNS, uh, CNS, central nervous system, but up inside the compartment where the brain and, neuro and um, um, spinal cord are. 
you get neurotransmitters, monoamine uh, neurotransmitters, phospho phospholipids, and nucleotides. Um, in cognitive impairment, they propose an underlying uh, problem associated with hyperhomocysteinemia. You remember, Ho homocysteinemia is the other uh, the other of the two tests, methyl malonic acid and homocysteine um, for vitamin B12 risk. Um, Risk factor, risk factor for dis dementia from hyperhomocysteinemia. They looked at some other things too. Hippocampal neurogenesis uh, inhibition. You remember we studied that and uh, talked about it in terms of uh, getting a hippocampal volume for um, the dementia associated with um, aging, Alzheimer's dementia. When we do those evaluations, we look at the hippocampal uh, volume. The hippocampus is the mechanism of the brain which um, creates memories. And <clears throat> last item, I'll just uh, mention this as a reminder. Um, as we talked about, it's not uh, vitamin B12 to, uh, to test for when your doc decides he wants to test for it and tell you that you don't have any problems. It's methylmalonic acid. You remember this. If you haven't seen that, then take a look at the other two videos. Um, we got fairly deep. I appreciate those of you who have hung in till the bitter end. Thank you again. <clears throat>